So I heard that quartz is piezoelectric, and of course my first thought was, I wonder if you can use that as a microphone. So I went down to my local gem shop and picked up this little nubbin, and I guess when this is exposed to pressure, or in this case vibration, a voltage should develop between opposite faces on the crystal. And Steve Mould has a really great video where he explains that. Steve Mould also says that he thinks that you would need to cut a very thin slice out of the crystal at exactly the right angle to be able to measure any voltage. But based on his own explanation, it's not really clear why that would be the case. And I also know that Steve Mould loves to quarrel with internet people. So as an act of defiance, I'm going to stick this whole crystal down in my little clamp here. And then I've got two aluminum foil electrodes that I'm going to squish in there with it just so I have something that I can attach wires to. And then I have those wires running off into a Marshmallow DIY Phantom contact mic preamp, which I have discussed ad nauseum in previous videos. And that preamp, in turn, is going into my audio recording interface, which then goes off into my computer. So let's see if this makes any sound. Oh my god, I'm shocked! But it does actually pick up sound. So suck on that, Steve Mo But of course this doesn't sound very good. It's very hummy, and it's very noisy, and it's quite unwieldy in this clamp. So I want to try to attach a mic cable to it. And I got this conductive adhesive, and I use that to glue the two inner conductors of the mic cable to opposing faces of the crystal. And then I pretty much just hosed the whole thing down with epoxy. And then somehow or another I need to enclose this in something that's grounded, and I want it to be removable. So I kind of mummified this with double-sided tape, and then wrapped a piece of aluminum foil around that. And the little stray wire sticking out to the side there is the cable shield. And I want that to be making really good contact with the aluminum foil, because I'm going to connect the other side of that to ground. And that's what's going to keep this from humming so badly. So let's stick this to a guitar and see what that sounds like. Yeah, I'm kind of surprised. That actually sounds better than I thought it was going to. The aluminum foil certainly solved the hum issue, but of course this is still quite noisy, and so I started wondering whether or not the preamp is even really necessary. So I tried removing the preamp from the circuit and just plugging the crystal directly into my audio recording interface, and this is what that sounds like. Okay, so clearly there's a lot less signal and a lot more noise, so the preamp definitely is helping here, and so I will be using the preamp throughout the rest of this video. However, put that thought on hold for a second, because I also heard that Rochelle Salt is piezoelectric. And there are like a million tutorials on the internet already that teach you how to grow your own Rochelle salt crystals, including this one by Collins Lab, and he even muses about the possibility of using this as a contact mic, although to the best of my knowledge I don't think that he ever followed through with that. So I'm going to follow his recipe here, with the one exception that I was not able to get sodium monocarbonate, so I started with sodium bicarbonate, and I just boiled out the extra carbon by heating it on the stove. And this is kind of oddly satisfying to do, because it starts behaving kind of like a fluid, even though it is still a powder. But I just kept heating this until it stopped boiling, and that took maybe 10 minutes or something. And from there, I just followed the standard recipe. So I've got water, I've got cream of tartare, I heated that in a water bath, I added the sodium carbonate a little bit at a time until the solution turned clearish and it stopped reacting, and I filtered that, and then I set up this beautiful 10-hour time lapse. And I know this looks like a still photograph, but this is in fact a gorgeous, breathtaking 10-hour time lapse movie. 
yeah, I don't know, nothing happened. So I came back 10 hours later and I scraped the side of the glass with this spoon and then all of these tiny crystals just started raining down out of solution. And so I set up the time-lapse camera again and the crystals did grow, but in the end I was kind of left with this crystal slush. Like it's a bunch of small crystals. I don't think this is really gonna work. So I redissolved everything just by heating it in the microwave. And then I actually did a few more runs of this and you can kind of see that the crystals grow differently in every single run. And a lot of what I got were like this, where it's kind of a big chunk that looks like it's just a bunch of small crystals kind of stuck together. But I did also get some pretty nice pieces that look a little bit more monolithic. And I really liked this piece in particular because it has this one flat side that looks pretty clearly like it's built up in layers. And if I really squint, I can kind of convince myself that those layers continue down through at least most of the piece. So I put this in my clamp. So let's see if that makes any sound. Once again, I have to say I'm kind of surprised that worked better than I thought. In fact, I might say that that works suspiciously well, and I started questioning whether or not I'm really measuring the piezoelectricity of the crystal, or if there could be some other thing in my setup that is somehow picking up sound. So I went and fished out my lucky rock, and a brief tangent about that, I found this rock many, many years ago in this beautiful red and white striped mountain range back when I was a strapping young lad. But in any event, I put this rock down in my clamp. And as far as I can tell, that's not picking up any sound. Of course, if I touch the electrode with a pencil, then it kind of buzzes. And that convinces me that my recording setup is correct, just the rock isn't picking up any sound, which in turn convinces me that the crystals really are picking up sound and it's not something else in my setup. So then I gave this piece of Rochelle salt the same treatment that I gave the quartz with the conductive adhesive and the epoxy and the double-sided tape and the aluminum foil. And so let's stick this to a guitar and see what that sounds like. And in fact, I'd like to play this again back to back with the quartz recording so that we can compare them. And I actually did record these at the same time with the same input settings and all of that. So to my ear, the Rochelle salt does sound a little bit better, but of course, I'm going to quantify that a little bit. So I did an experiment that I've done over and over again in almost all of the videos in this channel. And so I started by measuring the noise floor of my audio interface with nothing plugged into it. And I plotted the spectrum of that just as a baseline. So then I plugged in the quartz microphone and used that to record just a little bit of silence to get its noise floor. And so here's what that looks and sounds like. And then I did the same thing with the Rochelle Salt. And here are both of those plotted together. And what this is telling you is that these are both really, really noisy. Although the Rochelle Salt is a little bit less noisy, especially kind of in the middle of the plot here. And I'm not really sure why this is. I don't think the noise is really an intrinsic property of the crystal. I think it has to do with how they interact with the preamp circuitry. And I'm sure you could do better than this if you built a preamp specifically for this. So then I stuck the quartz to this little speaker and I played white noise out of this speaker and I recorded a little bit of that and so this is what that looks and sounds like. And then here that is plotted together with its own noise floor. And what this is telling you is that this is not very sensitive as a microphone, 
below maybe a thousand hertz it doesn't seem like it really picked up anything at all and above a thousand hertz it did pick up something but not much and then i repeated that with the rochelle salt and here it is with its own noise floor and again this is telling you about the same thing this isn't a very sensitive microphone but if i look at all of these plots together i can kind of convince myself that the rochelle salt is a little bit more sensitive than the quartz owing mostly to the little bit lower noise floor and so i'd like to leave you with one final recording that i made with the rochelle salt and this one i actually cleaned up in post including applying some pretty aggressive noise removal just because I wanted to see kind of how good I could make this sound. So here's that. So I'm not going to go as far as to say that I think that that sounds good, but actually, you know what? That does sound good. I'm proud of that. I don't care what you think. You're all a bunch of haters. Yeah, so I don't know. I guess that was all I was going to say about that for now. In all honesty, I really do appreciate you guys watching my videos and asking interesting questions in the comments and all of that. So thank you so much for watching, and I guess I'll see you next time. Bye!